So now that we've looked at an example of finding the potential function in R2, we need to establish a strategy for finding a potential function in R3. So suppose that vector f defined by components fgh is a conservative vector field. And I want you to remember that if this is a conservative vector field, this means that vector f is equal to the gradient of phi, which is equivalent to saying that f g h is equal to the vector with components defined by the partial derivatives of phi with respect to each of the variables x, y, and z. So we now want to establish that strategy. So to find the potential function phi such that the vector field is conservative, the first thing that we want to do is integrate. You're going to pick one of the partial derivatives here. So here I'm going to start with the partial derivative of phi with respect to x, which we know is equal to f, and we're going to integrate this with, and I'm going to abbreviate, let's do with respect to x to obtain phi. And one thing I want you to note here, just like we saw with R2, this includes an arbitrary constant function. So this includes a constant function. Now I'll let you guess which variables is this arbitrary constant function with respect to. If we've integrated with respect to x, the only two variables left are, you're correct, y and z. So we, this includes an arbitrary constant function defined as g of y, z. So now we need to find this arbitrary constant function. So to find the arbitrary constant function, g of y, z, we compute the partial derivative of phi with respect to y, and then equate it to g, the g component of the vector field, just like we did in R2. So once we've done that, that same process that we saw in two dimensions, we can then integrate the partial derivative of this arbitrary constant function, g of y, excuse me, this should be of yz. And then we're integrating this with respect to y to attain g of y, z. And again, just like in step one, this includes another constant function. So this includes another constant function with respect to that one remaining variable, z. So we have this new arbitrary constant function, h of z, that we need to find. So we repeat this same process again. So to find the arbitrary constant function h of z, we'll compute the partial derivative of phi with respect to z, and then equate it to the h component of the vector field. So we can see here that this process is repeating itself until we have an actual arbitrary constant c that's added on at the end. And by doing this process, by repeating this integration process, we incorporate each component of our vector field. And one last note before we look at examples here. Well, I started here in step one using the partial derivative of phi with respect to x, you can also begin with the partial derivative of phi with respect to y, or the partial derivative of phi with respect to z. So I encourage you to play around with what you start with. In some cases, the partial derivative of phi with respect to y or z may be easier than x.